Hello everyone, it's me, Aaron, and this is something kind of new for this channel. We've never actually done a video like this, but hopefully if you guys like it, we're going to end up doing way more, so let me know what you think of this in the comments down below. But our month-long celebration of Halloween is finally over. All throughout October, we made a video every single day talking about everything spooky and scary from the world of geekery. However, there is something else pretty big that I did in October that I did not get to talk about yet, so now we are finally doing a video all about. I got to go to New York Comic Con. They were nice enough to give me a press badge. In fact, it was actually the very first press badge I've ever gotten to a convention, so that was actually a pretty big feather in my cap. So I spent all four days of the convention going around from one panel to the next. I ended up going to the Voltron panel, which that was great, getting to see the cast of this amazing show and seeing how passionate they were about and seeing how well all of them got together. Honestly, that was one of the most fun panels that I was able to go to throughout the entire convention, and a lot of it just had to do with the fact that Man, this is such a charming and charismatic cast. I am going to be sad to see them go after this final season. Um, Laura. Oh, well, thank you, honey. So, I think, I feel like I'm becoming more and more like Alora as the show has progressed. Um, so. You've gotten the, the cleanly wave I've got the wave down. <laughs> Speaking of Netflix and reboots of 80s properties, I also attended the panel for She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, which all of you know is going to be premiering on Netflix very soon. I know that this is a show that a lot of people have really been looking forward to, and we actually got to see some of the very first clips for the show. And I gotta say, the show actually looks like a lot of fun. It looks really charming, it looks really uplifting, and it looks like it's going to be something kind of in the same tone as Adventure Time or Steven Universe, where it's got big imaginative adventures, but also has really heavy messages in there. So yeah, I applaud them for going down this route with this, and it was great to hear the creators of this series talk about their vision for the show. And in all honesty, what might have been my favorite panel to attend the entire weekend was the Drawfee panel. If you guys don't know what Drawfee is, it is a YouTube channel. I am going to put a link to it in the card that is popping up right now. It is one of the most fun and uplifting channels on all of YouTube. Basically, it's a group of artists who take random suggestions and they just draw out the crazy scenarios that they come up with in their minds. It is hilarious, and I have actually attended a few of their live shows before, and it was a great game to attend this one at New York Comic Con, where they were actually taking suggestions from the audience. These people are incredibly witty, and they are so quick. They can have a brand new idea thrown at them while they're halfway through a drawing, and they will just completely come up with something totally brand new based around this new idea that gets thrown at them. Seriously, check out their channel. There is nothing else on the internet quite like it. So it was great getting to go to all these panels. It was great getting to see every single booth out there and all the amazing merchandise that I got to see firsthand before the rest of the world got a chance to check it out. I mean, heck, I'm showing you a couple of the DC statues that I got to take a look at right now. And holy cow, there's some impressive stuff coming for anybody out there who has massive amounts of cash just burning a hole in their pocket. However, as I said, this was my first time going to convention on official duty, and I had to think, what do I want to cover? What do I want to be the big story that I am going to focus on? And I thought about the thing that I am honestly always the most impressed by every single time I go to New York Comic Con. It's not the panels, it's not the news stories they're breaking, it's not even Artist Alley, although there are some darn talented artists out there and you should all go out there and support them at your local conventions. No, the thing that always blows my mind at these big conventions is the cosplayers. Because speaking as someone with no artistic talent of their own, cosplayers to me are modern day wizards. Seeing someone take these really imaginative and colorful and gigantic figures from fiction and turning them into reality, not just reality, but reality that they themselves can wear around, that always blows my mind whenever I see someone who is able to come up with something truly special. So this year, I wanted to go and interview some of the best cosplayers I've found at New York Comic Con. So without further ado, I present you with a brand new segment that we are calling Aaron Has His Mind Blown by Cosplayers. That just used up our effects budget for the entire year. Still worth it though. Enjoy the show, everyone. Hi, I am here with... Selene. Brandon. Amanda. Uh, Jane Foster's Thor. I'm the uh, Palico, but dressed in the Carrion. And the Pink Raffian. Hunter. Hunter Pink Raffian. Swamp Thing. Espeon. 
Flareon. <laughs> Umbreon. <laughs> I'm glad I have such a long arm. Jackie. Tony Tony Chopper. Brainiac. I was not expecting that voice to be so cool. We literally saw you from like way down there. I was like, I got to talk to Honey Badger. Uh, th you're the first Honey Badger cosplayer I've seen. What made you want to do that character? Well, I really enjoyed uh, her featured in X-Men Red. And I'm a big Wolverine fan. And I think uh, she's a great character because she still kind of maintains her innocence, even though she kind of came from a hard beginnings. Um, I love Shazam. He's one of my favorite DC characters and I decided that I should be the villain because I think it's more fitting. Yeah, he just didn't get enough credit until they kind of announced the movie, but we've done it for like a couple years now, so. Well, so I was actually inspired by the Sideshow Collectibles figure of her and seeing that figure made me want to read the comics and I, Thor was always one of my favorite superheroes growing up. Um, I just liked the Norse mythology. I thought that was really fascinating and then once Jane Foster became Thor, I that was like my character. This is incredible. What made you want to do this massive project? Well, I love Swamp Thing, and I feel like in the cosplay world, you don't see a lot of Swamp Thing, so I wanted to just bring him out, you know? True, I love the character too, but you never really see him. I think it's because he's so hard to pull off, but you really did. I love that it even looks like it's changing from like autumn to like a different season over here. So if you look downward to my sneakers, first of all, I love Chopper, but Skechers was releasing these um, special one piece editions of sneakers and it was really hard because I've actually fit a size 11 and these are a size 10. The size 12 so I know the exact struggle that you're going through. Yeah, but I knew that I really wanted to because my whole inspiration is I'm a habiliment designer. Okay. So I really wanted to make outfits based off of characters. So for example, Tony, Tony Chopper, this would be the appropriate outfit to wear with your friends out to the park or actually go sailing and stuff. And so I decided to put experiment that, especially to pair up with the sneakers. I love that you said to go sailing too, because I was looking at like the like neckerchief or the scarf and I was like, that's exactly the feeling that I'm getting from that. So you absolutely nailed that. What made you want to do Brainiac? Like what was it that got you, that gave you this idea? Not many people do it. It's one of Superman's most iconic enemies. He's superior. He is a threat. And he'll take over everything. Absorb all the information around him. I think he really is like that guy who whenever you ask people, who do you want to see as the next Superman villain in the movies? He's always number one up there. Uh, us two are from Canada. So um, we were going to a convention called YetiCon. It's up near Toronto area. Yeah, so we decided to go, me and her, the, um, uh, the Umbreon, we decided to go last minute. So like we have had about a week and we're like, we need to find some kind of like swimsuit version of a cosplay. So Pokemon came out and it was super easy to make. And yeah, it's fun to wear because everybody knows who we are and it's, it's great. We feel great in these. And these are some of the only Monster Hunter cosplayers that I've seen here, but I love that you guys attend that because Monster Hunter has some of the best, like, both creature and armor designs. So what made you guys decide to come here as Monster Hunter characters? Well, I know when my son got the Monster Hunter, uh, Monster Hunter World game, <laughs> I love the palicos that was in it, and I love all the different outfits that they have. And then my daughter, she likes the game as well. Yeah, I see him play it a lot, actually. It's really fun. Well, I love cats. And when I saw the uh, when I saw the Palicos, they were so adorably cute. And with the different outfits, and this outfit, I like the most one, the Palico. So that's why I chose this one. My brother dressed up as a Raffalo like a year ago, and I wanted to do a similar thing. So he chose this for me. I've seen a lot of people dress as Spyro here, but I haven't seen anybody in something quite like this. This is one of the most impressive Spyro outfits I've seen. What I have no skill when it comes to like making or designing anything. Did you crochet this or? Yes, most of it is crochet. The arm pieces are knitted. Are knit? Okay. Like, how are you keeping? It? Okay, this is really. I should just tell the sequence cosplay for people who know nothing about cosplay because I'm going to ask some probably really dumb questions. The horns, like, how are you keeping them up if it's just crochet? Is there, like, stuffing inside of there? Or? Uh, it's cardboard, actually. I cut cardboard rings uh, and stack them up and shape them in a way where they make horn shapes. That is, wow. I am constantly blown away by what cosplayers are capable of. Yes, I, I originally done it back in about two, 2015 New York Comic Con. I did a, a first version. It was all black. And then I wanted to upgrade and do something similar towards the show Krypton's version of Brainiac and the Injustice uh, 
version of Brainiac in Justice 2. One of the most detailed Swamp Things I've ever seen. Like, I've been looking at this, and I keep noticing new details, like the little frog right here on the shoulder I absolutely love. Or you have, or you have a mouse on one of your arms. And a snake. Oh, wow. Yeah, I really am just noticing new stuff constantly. <laughs> well, a lot of time with the foam to make the, the armor, which we had a little trouble with. Um, and then the rest is just like some kind of spandexy suit and just sewed on the lightning bolts. Okay, and the lightning bolts are just basic LED lights that... Yeah, it's like, um, like a string, and it has like the little LEDs on the ends, and then so I just shoved it in there. Oh, cool! I would never have guessed I am not like handy or crafty in any way, shape, or form, so I never would have guessed this was foam. It looks that good. So yeah, uh, what do you use to like paint it? Like what type of paint did you use? Um, I used uh, gold spray paint, but I put like Mod Podge and sealed up the foam first and then just sprayed the gold on top. Okay. This entire series is basically just me learning what it takes to be a cosplayer, so like this seems pretty basic to you guys, but I'm just like, Mod Podge, oh my god, okay, wow. How many, like, stages went into this? Like, how do you have to, like, because you didn't just, like, pick the armors and stuff. You had to, like, turn a giant monster into a person here uh, and turn a cat into a person. So how many different stages went into, like, creating every piece of this or, like, coming up with the designs? Well, basically taking the photo, taking, taking a picture of it and then, see and then just breaking it down to basically seeing, okay, I want to get this certain element of it, and I want to get that certain element of it, and then just basically getting the materials I need. I like to go to thrift stores to see what they have, you know, to because you get a lot of different things in thrift stores. When you try to get in regular, regular stores, they don't have there anymore. And then also going to um, the hardware store because they have certain things there you could just make out of as well. And then whatever I can't make or get from hardware store, I have to get online, like the wig and um, like the gloves, but. Um, the context, context in, in the ears, but majority of it is something that I had to put together, and it took so long to put together. But so, it, <laughs> it is. This all came out great. But yeah, I think that that's something important for a lot of people to realize is that when you see a cosplayer, they didn't just like go to a store. Like This is all like pieced together. And yeah, it really shows like the effort that you guys put into this. How many, since you had to like completely design this thing completely fresh, uh, were there many different stages to it, or did you have like an idea right in your mind? So there were many stages to it. I mean, I could always pop ideas into my mind, but I always try to do some research on it. Like I have a Pinterest where I have mood boards of, okay, I know I want a chopper outfit, but what can I, you know, how can I piece it together? Like in the fact that I was putting sneakers with it, it would have to match with that kind of, the garment would have to match, match with the sneakers. So definitely I can't be out here with an outfit that definitely would go good with like boots or heels. And you know, I just have to make it match with the sneakers, you know? What exactly, what material did you use for making it? Cardboard, duct tape, uh, the plants I've got at Michael's. Okay, so this is all like plant supplies from Michael's, okay. That's really ingenious because I never would have guessed that was something that could have been gotten like so easily because you really did make it look really that detailed. I had to, I had to kind of break them all apart and these are all individually glued on so uh, the mask is made I, I sculpted it out of clay made a cast latex so. oh wow so the mask you made just completely from clay but you had to like basically take the pre-made stuff from Michaels break it apart and then put it all back together again pretty much yeah how long did this take because this is one of the best Jane Foster Thor outfits I've ever seen Thank you. that's high praise so thank you very much but um so this is actually a full 3d printed costume so it took about six months in total to make uh, about three months just for the helmet, and then the rest of the parts took a little bit. It was a little bit quicker once I figured out the process. That is one of the most amazing things I've seen. That is sheer dedication right there. Oh, so is this like your first time showing this off, or have you been wearing this for a while? First time. Yeah, this is the first time. So it's been, it's been, we've had a few hiccups, you know, here and there, which is what happens when you cosplay, but uh, it's been great so far. You've got light up parts, you've got so many little pieces. You even have the Bottle City of Kandor. What, how long did this take to make? Three months after a full-time job. Days off. After work, three months total. About 120 hours in. <laughs> Erica. Hello. Is, uh, our espion is our master crafter. Um, she made all of these uh, staves. She made her own staff, but all, everything else, um, Erica made. So. How long did it take you? Honestly, it didn't take me that long. I know it sounds crazy. Um, maybe six hours to make this costume. Three hours to make this. 
20 minutes. Like it does. <laughs> it doesn't take that long. Like I, I saw, my favorite cosplayer is Jessica Negri, so I loved her Espeon so much. I wanted to do something similar, so like my ears are kind of made off of hers. But then I just grabbed fabric and just started sewing, and we went with more of like a mage kind of look. So they're called. These are Gajinka Pokemon looks. Uh, did you make this outfit yourself? Yes, I did make it myself. How long did the, how long did this uh, take you? I actually started on Friday, last Friday, so a week. Wow, that is the best, quickest turnaround we've seen, and it looks fantastic. How long did this take you to make? I started crocheting on July first. <laughs> wow, when did you end? Uh, like, did it go all the way up until the convention? Uh, four days ago, I ended. <laughs> Is this the first time that you've ever attempted something like this? No, this is my fourth crocheted costume. Wow, where are the other ones? Last year I did Bowser from Super Mario Brothers. The year before that was Sonic the Hedgehog. And the year before that was Yoshi. How long have you been doing cosplays like this? Ever since I was 16. And um, it was funny because right at the age of like 16, I was going to CatsuCon, it's December, and I got a sewing machine from my grandmother. And so when I got it, I didn't know how to sew at all. Drape, cut, pattern, make, anything. And so I just got on there and sewed out a Totoro jacket. Yeah. Wow. So you've just been doing it like ever since? Like I, yeah, I have, you know, and it's a really, it's a really awesome experience. Like I did it once and I wore it to a convention. It's like, oh my gosh, I, I had this really great feeling inside of me that, um, really felt like, how should I express it, like a psychological happiness that I've, that this is not just I do this for fun, but definitely, like I definitely do this for fun, but now it has evolved into something where I could make it into a career. What was the first cosplay that you guys all did as a family together? I did a, we both did, I believe, a cat kimono at the Cherry Blossom Festival. It was a kimono and then we had a cat ears and a tail. It was just me and my daughter. But this year, we came as a collaboration with uh, me, my daughter, and my son, but he's in a different area. <laughs> but he is also a Rathal, as you say. He's a rad one. So, yeah, you got the whole thing going together there. But I just noticed you have a little glow-up, like, uh, attachment there as well. Man, there's so many things. That's one of the things I love about interviewing the cosplayers. As I'm talking to them, I keep noticing, like, different stuff to talk about. Like, just look at the boots. The boots are so good. I even noticed the little tiny, like, I'll zoom in on this. The little tiny uh, symbol of his on your chest. How long have you guys been doing cosplay together? Um, I've been doing it for three years. We've been doing it one year. Uh, yeah, we've been doing it for one year together, and this is our first one. It's my second day. <laughs> God, thank you. Well, I guess I should ask, like, how does it feel being a cosplayer now? It's so fun. Like the amount of attention you get is incredible, and everyone's just so nice because it's the same community of people. So it's very accepting and like. Just meeting everyone is so cool. Like, I love it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you want to say hi to Thor? You want to say hi to Thor? <laughs> oh my goodness, you have fans. Are, that is the greatest thing that we were going to get on camera all week long. Well, speaking of making a career, is there like a specific side that you would like to like uh, help uh, promote or like uh, anywhere where people can go and see your designs that you want to share? Or? Yeah, like. If you want a commission by me, my um, username is Pepper Meek, so Pepper and an M E E K. And if you just message me there, if you have some sort of idea you would like to execute, we could just have a meeting about it and see how we can get it, like put it together. So I am um, Berdra Cosplay. Uh, we do it together, but we also do like commissions and stuff. So we do um, large props and a lot of sewing and costumes. So that's always that's always a plus. <laughs> a new Instagram account called Crochet Cosplay Queen and it's going to be all about making these crocheted costumes. Well yeah, thank you guys both so much and I'm so glad that you guys are getting a movie for this guy and that you're both looking forward to it. I can look at how excited both they are to hear about this movie. What do you guys, yeah, what do you guys think about like the trailers and everything you've seen? We actually saw the trailer at San Diego Comic Con at the Warner Brothers panel like when they revealed it and I was ready to cry. I was so excited. I, I think Zachary Levi is going to be so much fun as Shazam. I think he's such a good casting choice. Pretty excited. We're waiting for Black Adam to show up, though, in the next one. But the movie comes out on my birthday, so it's like, it's pretty good for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome when it lines up. Yeah. Oh, 
Wasn't on my mouth. That's awesome when that lines up. I was too excited. I couldn't wait to get the microphone in my face. Uh, but thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your con. So there you have it. That concludes four whole days of New York Comic Con. Thank you again to the people at Comic Con for providing us with the press pass. And also thank you guys for watching this video. It was a ton of fun getting to come here and getting to interview all these cosplayers and get to go to all these different panels. And I would also like to go ahead and also put out there a special thanks to you to all the people who agreed to do an interview with us and agreed to talk about the amazing creations that you came up with. Every single one of the cosplayers players that I saw here, you are incredibly creative, imaginative people, way more than I could ever possibly hope to be, so I hope that you each continue to pursue every single one of these creative goals that you have. You all turn out some really incredible stuff. Thank you again to everyone for tuning in. I'm going to go home and sleep for about a week, because even though I love New York Comic Con, it is a ton of work. So thank you guys for tuning in. Come back next time. Bye.